What is up, Flutter devs? Today, we're going to continue our blitz through entire categories of methods in our port of processing over to Flutter. Let's go take a look at what we're working on today. We're going to focus on time and date. So we're going to implement day, hour, millis, minute, month, second, year to quickly return timing information that might be useful in your sketch. I'm going to copy these here so we can go port them. We'll come over to the project. As you've seen in recent videos, we are now implementing groups of behavior into isolated pieces, which we then mix into the overall sketch. That way, the sketch definition itself can just be a composition of other things that are more narrowly tailored and focused. Uh, now, time and date is a subcategory of input for some reason. That's where we're going to put it in our directory, our directory structure. So lib source package called input. And then we are going to create a file called time and date. We're going to create a class called sketch time and date. And then I'll paste those names in here. I'm going to reorder them a little bit. I'm going to go from smallest granularity to largest. So we're going to have Millie's second minute, hour, day, month, year. Now, most of these operate in a similar fashion, except for millis. Millis actually returns the number of milliseconds since the start of the program, which means we have to actually remember something here. But because it says from the start of the program, that means that we can grab the time when the process initializes and hold on to it. And that's as simple as saying this. We will say final uh, app start time equals date time dot now. This line, I believe, will execute at the beginning of the process when the class is allocated. And therefore, any moment after that, we can subtract the current time, subtract this time from the current time, and then return the milliseconds. And that will implement millis. So we'll return an int and we will say date time dot now minus app start time. Uh, and that does not support subtraction like that. So we need to say subtract duration. And then we will say, uh, let's see, I guess millisecond. Let's, let's see the definition here. Okay, so that's not what we want. Um, we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to say the current time, milliseconds since the epoch, since 1970, minus app start time dot milliseconds since epoch. And that is going to be the correct answer. If we had simply done date time dot millis, that's going to give us Milli is between zero and a thousand. It's like in this one second, since the previous second, how many milliseconds have gone by? That's not what we want. We need the difference between two dates. So that requires that we get the total milliseconds for one date and subtract the total milliseconds from the other date. Now, the rest of these operate a little bit differently. Let's look at the API for second. The second function returns the current second as a value from 0 to 59. So it's like counting up, 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 and then it reaches after 59, it goes back to 0 and counts up again. So here, I believe what we can say is just second. Let's go check that definition. So the second, 0 to 59, that seems like the right thing to return. For minute. Let's make sure that matches up. 0 to 59. Come over here. Minute 0 to 59. So that is what we want. Hour. Hour is 0 to 23. Hour here is 0 to 23. Now let's, I don't remember if date time gives us day, month, and year, but let's find out. It does. So day, whoops, day is 1 to 31. 
day here is 1 to 31. Month. Month is 1 to 12, inclusive. Month here is 1 to 12, good. And then year, date, time, now, year, and that is certainly correct. And just like that, we have passed through the information. You can either look at it as passing it from Dart over to processing, or we have, um, you know, ported the processing APIs to use what's built in to Dart to give us all the same answers. And now, just like that, in just a few minutes, we have implemented the date and time subcategory. That's all I've got for you today. In the next video, we'll either pick up one more of these sections or we'll start doing refactoring of the overall project. I can't remember what's next, but one of those two things, and I'll see you then.